Hello, uh, thanks for listening in. It's great to have you with us. In the conventional model of the classical electron, the velocity and acceleration fields are distinguished by the fact that whereas the acceleration fields radiate at the speed of light, the velocity fields are static and remain with the particle as it moves. Unfortunately, this is a very poor model for the classical electron, as the word static raises a very bright red flag. I learned that electromagnetic forces between elementary particles are transmitted by spin-1 bosons, and there's no possibility of transmitting anything through a field that's regarded as static. Without any further discussion, in this short video, I'm going to show you how to reinterpret the Coulomb fields of a classical electron as vacuum radiation fields. While this is a flagrant violation of the principle of conservation of energy, let's see what this theory looks like. Then we can decide later if we want to keep it or not. So, how do you get a Coulomb field to radiate? This space-time diagram shows an electron born at the origin of a coordinate system and moving to the right at constant velocity. In this picture of the electron, causality demands that the velocity fields must be contained within a sphere moving away from the source at light speed. The implication is that the velocity fields must be carriers of momentum and energy. Having said that, it's easy to write down momentum flux fields simply by multiplying the electric and magnetic fields of the particle by a fundamental surface charge density. From here, it's trivial to write Maxwell's equations for radiating Coulomb fields. For velocity fields only, just multiply each equation by the fundamental charge density. If you do this, the sources in these equations will become force densities instead of charge densities. It's also interesting to observe that electrons and positrons both satisfy this set of equations. Now let's write down the constant velocity pointing vector using the new flux fields. We see that maintaining the pointing vector requires us to introduce a new constant mu sub e having units of pressure. If you do the math, you'll find that this pressure is exactly the outward pressure of a surface charge density with classical radius r sub e tending to explode the particle. The pointing vector can also be extended to include particle accelerations, and this requires acceleration fields to be carriers of momentum flux. This is all we'll say about acceleration fields. Now let's return to the velocity theory. The idea of inserting momentum flux into the velocity fields of the classical electron is a good one. Now we must develop a theory of wave motion to show how this energy is propagated. Before continuing, it's worth mentioning that it's interesting how a particle radius and a surface charge density have both emerged as part of the discussion. Having said that, let's begin in the rest frame with a classical radius in the form of a complex oscillator. The frequency of this oscillator is extremely large, somewhere around 10 to the 23 radians per second, and the ratio of the invariant Dirac frequency to this one is exactly one half the fine structure constant. Let's view this oscillator as the spatial boundary of a propagating vacuum field, which radiates longitudinal spherical waves traveling at light speed. A link to electromagnetism follows by multiplying the vacuum field by 4 pi times the electron's surface charge density, resulting in the magnetic vector potential A. Now we construct a set of covariant null potentials by including the magnitude of the vector potential as the time component. Together, these are rest frame vacuum gauge potentials. We'll calculate the velocity fields of the electron in a few minutes. For now, let's see what vacuum gauge potentials look like relative to a moving frame. This equation shows the set of vacuum gauge retarded potentials relative to a moving frame undergoing oscillations with respect to the retarded time. The particle can be rationalized by analyzing the potentials in terms of individual components. The function u nu is the moving frame dilatation function. It only depends on the radial distance r and describes a microscopic orifice in the vacuum, allowing for the inflow of radiated field energy. This vector is not a distortion of space-time. Instead, it's a radial dilatation of a medium that's defined on top of Minkowski space. It can be evaluated at the retarded distance, r is equal to r sub e, 
where the space-like or space components become the radius vector of the electron. At this radius, the vacuum gauge potentials show that the charge density becomes Doppler shifted, appearing as a function of the polar and azimuthal angles. In the space-time diagram shown here, the red circles are drawn to indicate the radius of the moving particle. We note that the present position of the electron is not at the center of the charge distribution, and that's shown by the floating blue arrow. Here's an illustration of what vacuum gauge potentials look like in space. This video clearly shows oscillations of the radius vector of the electron generating vacuum waves as it moves to the right. The Doppler nature of the field should be very familiar to any educated physicist. Now that vacuum gauge potentials have been introduced for the classical electron, let's see how these potentials can be used to determine the momentum flux velocity fields. To begin, let's differentiate the potentials in the conventional way using these familiar formulas. If you do this, you'll get electric and magnetic Maxwell fields, except that each field will inherit the high frequency oscillations of the potentials. These fields are not capable of exerting forces anymore, but you're missing the point here because the momentum flux fields can be written explicitly as bilinear combinations of vacuum gauge potentials. If the potentials are treated as complex valued functions, then they become wave functions for particles of the electromagnetic velocity flux. In a covariant approach, vacuum gauge potentials can be written in terms of their time-like and space-like components. These individual components can be organized to produce a momentum flux field strength tensor, which we're calling pi mu nu. Now let's calculate the invariant power emitted by a constant velocity electron. There are actually several ways to do this. In this first approach, we begin only with the electric flux vector. The boundary of the vacuum dilatation is illustrated by this diagram. A unit surface area on the boundary points inward, while the flux field points outward. This means that the electric flux integral around the boundary necessarily inherits a minus sign. The value of the power radiated is enormous on the order of 10 to the 10 watts, and the impact of this number and the significance of the minus sign is not well understood. Regardless, vacuum power can also be determined by combining the time and space components of the vacuum gauge potentials. This is important because it leads to a natural formula for radiated flux during particle accelerations. To finish this video, let's quantize the classical particle by integrating the inertial power to a finite proper time tau. Now form a complex oscillator whose argument is the integrated power divided by the energy of a radiated quantum. This is a Dirac oscillator if the energy of the radiated quantum is about 140 MeV. The full Dirac wave function follows by inserting the spin or field and transforming the time coordinate. So, to summarize, we have shown how a classical electron with radiating velocity fields has led to a theory where the potentials appear as geometrical and physically meaningful quantities. This is as far removed from the literature as the idea of violating conservation of energy in the first place. But it all seems to be working just fine. Not only does the vacuum gauge electron eliminate the infinite self-energy, but a calculation of the stress tensor will also ensure particle stability at the classical radius. Thanks for listening in. I hope you've enjoyed this video and have a great day.